allegations of emotional abuse. I just broke down, started crying. Your relationship with your team or your mental health. Tonight, current and former NKU women's basketball players speaking only with WLWT why they feel like complaints against their coach are being swept under the rug. Plus, caught on camera, a police chase reaching 100 miles an hour ends in a crash. He racked, he racked. Why the driver told police he was afraid to pull over. This is WLWT News 5, leading the way. Current and former NKU women's basketball players are alleging emotional abuse at the hands of their coach. And good evening, I'm Mike Dardis. And I'm Cherie Palello. One senior wrote an online editorial detailing what she calls a dark hidden secret within the program. Only WLWT News Files Molly Lair sat down with her tonight. Molly? Well, Sheree, Taryn Tauher tells me that she's been waiting more than a year to go public with these allegations of emotional abuse. Now that her senior year is over, she feels she can come forward without that fear of punishment or retribution. Other current and former teammates are also backing up her claims with stories of their own. These three young women love the game of basketball. They all started playing as kids, and it's what brought them to Northern Kentucky University, but all claim to have struggled with what they call a toxic environment at the hands of head coach Cameron Whitaker. What she did was degrading, and it, it got to my heart, if that makes sense, and just calling us names and constantly putting us down. Taryn Taher made her concerns public in a story posted to the Odyssey online. She lists allegations recorded over the years that left a negative mark, one concerning a friend and teammate with Crohn's disease. When she ran out of practice and coach was like everyone on the line and she made sure I know that we were going to run because she went to the bathroom and I knew I was like something's not right. She has a disease and it's not her fault. Tauher says Whitaker is known for one on one meetings in her office where players would sit on what is known as the crying couch. Casey Utrecht is no stranger to those meetings. The way she talks to you made me question like who I was. The women say it's not about coming down on players. I actually love coaches that yell at me and get in my face and tell me what to do, but that's constructive criticism and I'm used to it. All three women say they tried to alert university officials, but never saw a change in Whitaker's behavior. We did everything that we are supposed to do. We met with the coach, we met with the AD, we met with Title IX, and you feel like maybe something's going to come of it when you take these proper steps and then you hear nothing. Utrecht ultimately left the team. Reese Munger is transferring. Your relationship with your team or your mental health, it was like it was that black and white. The university did release a statement to us today saying the well-being of our student athletes is of the utmost importance and when concerns are raised about our programs, they are appropriately appropriately reviewed, evaluated and addressed. It goes on to say the university is aware of complaints surrounding the women's basketball program. They have been thoroughly reviewed separately by the Title IX and athletics offices and addressed in accordance with university policy. Now, the players I spoke with did say some of their teammates were too scared to come forward while others say they have not had any negative experiences with Coach Whitaker. Reporting live at Northern Kentucky University, Molly Lair, WLWT News 5. Molly, thank you. A high-speed chase weaving in and out of traffic from Anderson Township all the way up to Montgomery. Police say the driver reached speeds of more than 100 miles an hour before finally crashing. WLWT News 5's Dan Griffin live for us at the Justice Center in Hamilton County tonight where the man behind the wheel is now behind bars. Dan? Yeah, well, Sheree, the chase went on for miles. The man driving the car was able to avoid stop sticks the entire time. Then he went too fast for an exit ramp. This is a Montgomery police officer waiting along I-275 for this guy, Darius Miller, to come speeding by early Sunday. Dispatchers and first responders were tracking him as he led them on a high-speed chase. We're coming up exit 59. And so he just moved into the inside or left lane. Police say this chase started in Anderson Township when Miller refused to pull over for a Hamilton County deputy. Deputies say he sped off eventually onto I-275. Just past the 52 over 2, center lane still. Center lane. They're past the 52 over 2, still center lane. 
Left lane, left lane. You can see Miller weave in and out of traffic in a Toyota Corolla. Several agencies chased Miller as he punched the gas, avoiding stop sticks every bit of the way. We're driving approximately 110 miles per hour. Officers say he had the pedal to the floor for about 16 miles. Then this happens. Miller eventually crashes the Corolla on an exit ramp to I-71. Police say Miller told them he was driving the Corolla as a bootleg cab and he was scared to stop because his license is suspended and he has traffic warrants. All right, so there was another man in this bootleg cab, but police say he was not arrested. We're live downtown. Dan Griffin, WLWT News 5. All right, Dan, thank you. Miller was arraigned in court today. The case now heads to a grand jury next week. Two parents convicted of raping their own children will likely never get out of prison. Their victims had these final messages for them in court today. I got two horrible parents. I lost so many good memories about my childhood because of the things you did to me. You think this would have never came out? You thought you would have never been caught? God didn't fa fail us like you two did. Their father, Herman C., was sentenced to four life terms. Angela Stites, their mother of two of three of the victims, was sentenced to 86 years behind bars. The abuse taking place at their homes in Norwood and Coleraine Township up until 2015 when one of the girls told a school counselor. A convicted killer from northern Kentucky will have to wait 10 more years before he has another chance at parole. Back in 1994, Trout. Clay Shrout shot and killed his parents and baby sisters, then held his classmates hostage at Ryle High School in Union. In last week's hearing, Shrout said he was no longer a threat to the community, but today the board denied parole and deferred him for another 10 years. A new report reveals what a student claims went on behind closed doors that led to a fraternity being suspended. We told you last Friday, Delta Tau Delta at Miami University was shut down after hazing allegations. According to a redacted report released today by the school, a pledge said he and 24 other pledges attended a mandatory event at the house March 16th. He says he was hit repeatedly with a paddle that had spikes and grooves. The pledge claims that he was blindfolded and not allowed to leave when he was asked that he wanted to. He also says that he was forced to consume large amounts of alcohol and marijuana. The pledge later spent seven hours in the hospital with a blood alcohol content three times the legal limit. At one point, he said he felt like he was going to die. The Miami University president said in a statement, the administration will take swift stern and appropriate action in handling any and all cases of hazing. Police are also investigating, but nobody has been charged so far. The daughter of a murder victim is now hoping others can learn from her mother's death. Tonight, Marquita Westbrook's family and friends brought candles and balloons to Forest Avenue, right outside the home where she was killed last week. Police say her boyfriend, Rico Murph, choked her to death. Westbrook's daughter says that it never should have come to this. If anyone is going through abuse, domestic abuse, no matter what people say, speak out. Rico Murph is in jail tonight on a million dollars bond. His next court date is scheduled for Monday. While Trooper the puppy looks for a new home, his owner is now facing some charges. This is new video of Trooper with his foster family being pushed around in a stroller, lost his back legs and one eye after he was hit by a train earlier this month. Today, the Butler County Dog Warden told us Trooper belonged to a 17-year-old from Hamilton who dumped him in a park. That teenager now charged with cruelty and abandonment. Well, a lot of you have been asking us how you can adopt this cutie Trooper. We have that information right now on our website. Just go to WLWT.com or download the WLWT mobile app. All right, a traffic alert for your morning commute. Part of Columbia Parkway will be closed again, this time because of a fallen lamp post. So the, this all impacts westbound lanes right between Kemper and Taft through rush hour tomorrow morning. Crews remove the light pole, but the cleanup and the repairs just aren't finished yet. Many of you are used to these closures, I know, because of the repeated landslides there along Columbia Parkway. The city is working on a solution for that, but it's expected to take and cost millions of dollars. Three Cincinnati siblings are advancing now to the next round on NBC's The Voice. I was worried about this one as it was going on, but Megan, Ryan, and Katie Bundy impressing the judges during tonight's battle round. Look at that. The trio went up against Michaela Astell from New York, and it was the Bundys who walked away with a win for Team Kelly. We have loved Kelly.
Kelly for forever swing. It just like means the world to us. Thank you, Kelly. The Wyoming High School and Miami University grads started singing as kids and officially formed a band back in 2012. Listen to that applause. The Bundys are hoping The Voice will take their career to the next level, and it usually does when you win a couple of rounds like that on The Voice. I'm telling you, they have the look, they have the sound, the fact that it's a, a trio and they're siblings. I really think they're going to go far in this competition, but also even beyond. And this they're from show. Cincinnati, right? So there yeah, you go. Let's root it. for them to keep on going <laughs> on. You can catch the next episode of The Voice next Monday, eight o'clock, right here on WLWT. All right, big news tonight: President Trump cleared of collusion, but Democrats say not so fast why we could be hearing more from Robert Mueller about the Russia investigation. Plus, new rental restrictions, how the free-for-all for Airbnbs could be coming to an end in Cincinnati. And tumbling temperatures tonight. Chief Meteorologist Kevin Robinson tells us if it's going to warm back up for hopefully at least by opening day. Hi there. Hey, good evening, Mike and Sheree. Yeah, it is an awfully cold night outside right now. Look at temperatures down into the mid 30s, almost freezing currently in Wilmington. Quick peek of your first look forecast for your Tuesday after a cold start. Fantastic sunshine for the afternoon. I have tomorrow's forecast and a peek at opening day. That's up after the break. You're watching Cincinnati's WLWT News 5. Team News 5 leading the way. Well, with the Mueller report submitted and Attorney General William Barr releasing his summary, President Trump is claiming victory tonight. But Democrats still want to see that full report themselves. And today, President Trump said he has no problem with it going public. They are. Just days after the Mueller report delivery, President Trump continues his victory lap. It's 100% uh, the way it should have been. I wish it could have gone a lot sooner, a lot quicker. We can never let this happen to another president again. I can tell you that. Attorney General William Barr, in his four-page summary of the special counsel's report, telling Congress Robert Mueller did not find that members of the Trump campaign coordinated with Russia. But on obstruction, Mueller did not reach a conclusion, instead leaving that up to Barr, who writes, the special counsel states that while this report does not conclude that the president committed a crime, it also does not exonerate him. Barr and Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein deciding there is not enough evidence to charge the president with a crime, Democrats are not satisfied. Right now we have a four-page summary written by somebody else, not by Robert Mueller. And that somebody else is not a disinterested party. He's a political appointee uh, of Donald J. Trump. Some lawmakers pushing to subpoena both Mueller and Barr to testify before Congress. Meanwhile, President Trump appearing to attack those who started the investigation. There are a lot of people out there that have done some very, very evil things, very bad things, I would say treasonous things uh, against our country. As for releasing the report, President Trump says it would not bother him, but he is leaving that decision up to his attorney general, who says he's working to release what he can. The attorney who once represented Stormy Daniels in her legal battle with President Trump was released from jail tonight on bond. New York prosecutors say Michael Avenatti tried to extort millions of dollars from Nike by threatening bad publicity. He's also facing charges in California where he's accused of misusing a client's money to pay for his own debts. Avenatti says he believes that he will be exonerated in both cases. The first major U.S. gun restriction in years goes into effect tomorrow, banning bump stocks. The devices modify guns so they can fire in rapid sequence. Bump stocks came under fire back in 2017 after they were found at the scene of the 2017 Las Vegas shooting. The Justice Department, with support from the president, issued a rule banning the devices late last year. Gun rights groups asked the Supreme Court to stop the ban, but it has not responded yet. All right, well, a heads up to any of you who operate an Airbnb here in Cincinnati. Today, a council member filed a proposal for new restrictions on these short-term rentals. Hosts would now have to register with the city and display a registration number on your rental listing. There would also be a 7% tax collected from guests. The money would go toward improving affordable housing options. City Council will now discuss the entire plan next Monday. Hollywood filmmaker Ron Howard has been spotted yet again in Middletown at Triple Moon Coffee Company. 
Ron Howard posing for photos with employees, but this is not his first time there. As I mentioned, he stopped in for lunch last October while scouting Middletown as a location for his upcoming movie, Hillbilly Elegy. The film will be based on the best-selling book of the same name, written by Middletown native J.D. Vance. <laughs> Very successful guy. He just seems so cool, like easy to approach really anyway. To you know? And how about those girls? They look so excited. Right. Like, can we get our picture and with you? And you wonder if they really know, have any idea. It's like their dad <laughs> like, said, happy don't days. get his Always autograph. happy days. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, let's talk about this weather. It is going to be downright cold when you walk out the door in the morning. Chief Meteorologist Kevin Robinson with a little, a little blast of winter yet again. Yeah, you know what? You got to remember, it's only, what, mid to late March here, and we can still have some pretty chilly nights and mornings, but thankfully we're to that time of the year now where the sun angle is so high in the sky on a day which offers full sunshine like the next two will, you actually end up with some very nice days. So let's start our weather headlines here. We've got chilly nights and mornings, but we've got beautiful days headed our way through Wednesday. And yes, as the second headline here says, we've been telling you about a almost picture perfect opening day. I'm still working to keep that to be the case here because there's a weather system that wants to move in here. It looks like late Thursday night, mainly into Friday and the weekend, but we are going to have to watch this very closely. At least it's going to offer us some clouds on opening day, but I think as of right now, we're still in pretty good shape. And then it looks like a wet start to your weekend with rain in here on Saturday. All right, it is a chilly evening outside. Temperatures have been falling down through the 30s all night. Hamilton's at 36, 35 in Oxford. You're almost freezing now in Wilmington. So currently here in Cincinnati with clear skies and a north breeze, we've dropped to around 38. When you factor in the wind, though, it feels like it's closer to 30. Some of you actually feel like it's down into the upper 20s already. So around the region as a whole, 35 up in Brookville and Oxford, Springboro coming in at 35. You're at 34 in Hillsboro, 36 in Georgetown, Walton down to 38, Owenton also down to 38, as well as Alexandria. So here's your hour by hour forecast walking you through the next couple of hours. Most of us will drop below freezing a few hours after midnight by 2 or 3 a.m. And then it looks like by morning, yeah, we're headed all the way down into the upper 20s. So lows overnight tonight will generally range anywhere between 25 and 30. I'm not worried about frost tonight as I think there's a little bit of enough of a wind to keep conditions not quite prime for frost development, but still a freeze expected with chilly numbers. And then as I promised tomorrow with sunshine, wall to wall sun from start to finish tomorrow, afternoon highs are likely to soar all the way up into the upper 40s, close to 50 degrees. So most of us will end up somewhere between about 45 and 50. So here's the weather system tonight pulling its way towards the east coast that brought us the rain basically since Sunday afternoon. It's now getting out of here. High pressure, the weather good guy scooting in for two beautiful days here again tomorrow and Wednesday and probably going to even last into Thursday, although there's some changes coming. Here's a look at future casts. Not much to really show you. Skies are essentially clear again. Hard pressed to find a cloud in the sky tomorrow should be a beautiful one after a cold start. Same story a deal again on Wednesday. After another chilly start, temperatures in the 20s, we should see those temperatures on Wednesday shoot up almost to 60 degrees. That's one of the benefits of this time of the year. You can get big jumps in temperatures between morning and afternoon, and then it looks quiet Wednesday night. All right. As promised, for right now, opening day still looking pretty good out there. The forecast looks good with temperatures in the mid 60s, kind of breaking it down by the events throughout the morning. If you're heading down around downtown 10 a.m., not bad. Temperatures in the mid 50s, pressing 60 at noon and then up to about 65 at that first pitch forecast. I want to emphasize, though, there may not be quite as much sun on here as we currently see on this graphic because we do have clouds rolling in, but I'm going to hold the rain off for now, although it could sneak in here though Thursday night after all the big events during the day. So we'll watch the timing. Much colder tonight, 27 for your overnight low. And then tomorrow, cool sunshine, a little bit of a breeze. So even though we get close to 50, if you're in the shade, it may still feel a little bit on the cooler side of things. But again, a beautiful spring afternoon. Here's your seven day forecast. There's your high near 60 on Wednesday. There's opening day. I've made Friday and Saturday weather impact days. Uh, Mike and Sheree, we've talked about the threat for some rain trying to sneak in here Thursday night, a little bit on Friday. But one thing's for sure, Saturday is the big wet day here. 
here in the seven day forecast. So a wet start to the weekend before it turns colder on Sunday. All right, Kevin, we'll keep watching that Thursday. See what happens. Speaking of opening day, be sure to join us. WLWT. Thursday in person and on air. Yeah, and so our coverage for the Finley Market opening day parade begins at noon on Thursday. Randy Rico, Megan Mitchell, and Colin Mayfield will lead the start of our live coverage from Washington Park. Before and during the parade, you can bring your family to the park for live music, food, and meet our team too. And then as the parade continues, Mike, Kevin, George, and I are going to be continuing our team coverage from the Flying Pig Parade float and along the parade route. You can also watch the fun from home right here on WLWT. Yeah, the Reds now just days away from the start of the season. Plus, Darquez Denard returning to the Bengals for a sixth season. What he's saying about his future with the team next in sports.